Allah's blessings and favors upon us are endless. Allah says in the Quran, and of his signs is that he created for you from yourselves mates that you may find tranquility in them. And he placed between you affection and mercy. Indeed, in that are signs for a people who give thought. Marriage can be a number of things. It can be Allah's paradise on earth in a house filled with tranquility, compassion, love. And it can be a pit hole of hell where it's like a swamp without a bottom, filled with problems, disputes, argument, and it can be in between. And most marriages are almost in between. Yet, you will find that there are so many efforts wasted, so many things put into it without any result. It's like a, so a body without a soul. Many marriages are a lost cause. They are treating marriage as if it is a motel room with benefits such as a restaurant and laundry. And women, on the other hand, treat their spouses in such marriages as a moving mobile ATM. This is all what it is, such marriages. No tranquility, no affection, and no mercy. Now, family disputes, marital disputes, usually are inevitable. No marriage usually is free from it even with the great scholars of Islam. Yani, Ahmed ibn Hanbal, for example, he says, I married Umm Abdullah, and for 20 years, we fought only once, and I was the wrongdoer. So she was a good woman for 20, but again, even the marriage among scholars, imams, you find that there would be some form of disagreement. So, if this is the nature of marriages, how can we utilize it to the best? What is the best thing to do to utilize such marriages so that we would avoid any possible conflict? Do you guys find any problem with audio? Not the ladies. The ladies. Well, it's best not to listen, <laughs> maybe. Yalla, khair, inshallah. Tayyip. Now, to talk about this big issue, you would probably need a workshop, not a lecture. Because this is a story of a life that we're talking about. So it involves so many aspects into it. But if you look at most disputes, I do a lot of marriage counseling, alhamdulillah. And this is something I, find my, I found myself in in the last few years, that it is good to be able to resolve disputes, not only marriage counseling, but disputes. When people differ, they need someone external to come and say, Akhi, you're wrong, and he's right and show you the logic, because so many times we're blinded. So when I look into such disputes, I find that the origin of it is attributed to a number of factors. One of them is human nature. You find that sometimes you have chemistry with another person that you are so close to, 
you'd li like to spend your whole life with. So you have a friend and you enjoy hanging out with, you go places, you're so close together. But at the same time, you may find people that you simply don't like. There's no chemistry. Even if they are good to you, even if they are people of knowledge, but you don't feel comfortable to. Mashallah, stereo. Now I can't even see myself. So, by this, yani I have du'at, I have scholars, I know, I hate their guts. Sorry. We go to conferences together, we sit together. I don't like them. I don't like their nature. Subhanallah. And there are people, mashallah, we are best of friends as if we know one another for centuries. This is human nature. When you get married to someone, you might find this. It's like buying a watermelon. The guy opens it for you, it's red and sweet. Sometimes it's white and sour or, or, or not tasty. Marriage is like this. Also, some of the disputes are attributed to social effects. So you come from a culture, she comes from a, a different culture. And this is why I'm not very supportive of uh, multicultural marriages or intercultural marriages, as they say. Because so many sisters who married a revert, who's a good practicing brother, find problems in their marriage. Why? Different culture. Nothing is wrong with the brother, but his culture is different. The woman is used to finding her husband coming and addressing his, her father as uncle or pops and mother auntie. In their culture, the reverts, they call them by name. How are you, Abdullah? What is this? He's, he's as young as his children. He's calling him like this. See, it's a different issue of culture social in, uh, 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 effects. Among the reason of disputes, which is highly attributed to, is ignorance of Sharia. When the spouses don't have a reference, a point of reference to judge. When I, well, you, are, you and I have a dispute, who should we turn to? You say, I go to the civil court. Say, I go to Sharia court. Say, I go to my guru. No, we have to have foundation that would solve our problems. If we were knowledgeable in Sharia, you and I would go to Quran and Sunnah and see who's right and who's wrong and the dispute is over. Also, among the reasons for such disputes is misunderstanding and a big misunderstanding She's not married yet. She's still misunderstanding of rights and obligations. Most disputes take place because I only see my rights and I'm always neglectful of my obligations. So why aren't you doing this? You're supposed to do this and that. Not looking in the mirror and seeing that I myself am not doing what I'm supposed to do. Now, this is an overlook. If we want to go down and dissect it, it would take us ages. So I gathered few points here and there. Maybe it would not save your marriage. Inshallah, your marriage is saved. But it would help you improve your marriage. Among the reasons for trouble between the spouses, lying or not being able to trust. And this is a little bit controversial. In Islam, lying between the spouses is recommended. Seriously, there's a hadith 
The Prophet said والسلام, lying is prohibited except in three situations. One of them lying to the spouse. So this is recommended, but you have to understand it in context, not to openly take a, a, a rain check considering that lying is okay. Scholars say lying in terms that would increase the love between the spouses is recommended. Your wife comes to you, and I always give this example, I don't know why, but it sticks into my head. She comes to you wearing a beautiful red dress. And she says, how do I look? And you start laughing for half an hour nonstop. And he said, this is your grandchild's uh, dress? It's so tight on you, what is this? You need at least to lose 35 kg. What do you expect from her? No, you should lie. You should say, Wallahi, I don't know whether you're making the dress beautiful or the dress is making you beautiful. <laughs> to me, I think that you are making the dress, the dress is normal, but you make it wow. <laughs> this is diplomacy, this is halal lying. Men come out of the bathroom, usually wrapping a towel around their waist and failing to see their toes for the past 20 years because of their belly. And they flex their muscles in front of the mirror. And, and, and he says to his wife in a proud voice, how, my, how do my muscles look? She laughs for half an hour ended by divorce. She, she said, what, what, what is this? What, what are you talking about? What muscles are you talking about? This is not right. The right thing to say and the right lie is I don't know whether you're more handsome or Arnold Schwarzenegger in the 70s. <laughs> wow, look, look at this body, wow. Just do it. This is halal lying. Now the lies that happen in marriages and destroy them, they're not like this. They're frequent liars, like frequent flyers. We have frequent liars who constantly lie. They lie over everything. So, okay. They lie when it comes to going out. Uh, I have a shift. I have work to do at the office while he's actually going to be with his friends. Or some of them even lie to go to their parents because of the pressure they get from their missus. So they're so scared to say, I'm going to my father or my mother. Oh, I have things to do, I have homework, I have this and that. Some of them lie compulsively to hide their shortcomings. They don't do their obligations, so the only way to run away is to lie. Why didn't you bring the groceries? Um, I had a flat tire. I had this, I wanted to go and see the doctor. And how can you live like this? <laughs> okay, now we have stereo. So shall I reply, re replay the, the whole thing again? Well, I will not summarize anything. <laughs> I have so much material that it would take us to taraweeh. And in, in these type of lectures, you cannot just say one, two, three and, and leave. Each one has an example, something that Allah Azza wa Jal shows you. So uh, tough luck, yani, try to maintain your marriage. Don't get a divorce. Anyhow, uh, sometimes we lie when we are afraid of confrontation. So no one likes to be questioned. And if I have a spouse that interrogates me on every single thing, the easiest way to do is to lie. If a woman is always asked by her husband about every little tiny things in the house, she will eventually lie. And whenever there is lying compulsively in the marriage, this destroys it. I can't sit with someone I cannot trust. She cannot live with someone she cannot trust. Marriage is built on trust. And therefore, if the bridges were destroyed between us, it requires years to rebuild. So 
I highly advise people not to lie. Confront your problems, face them, and don't run away from them. Some of the brothers say, I need to get a, ma to get a second wife. This is your right, if you're man enough. They lie, they cheat, they get married, and five years later, he comes to me and says, Sheikh, I told my wife yesterday that I am married to a second wife with two children, and now she's seeking divorce. What to do? This is your problem. You should have said that from day one. If you know you're man enough to run two houses, two marriages, two wives, make it clear from day one. Hiding it this long, you're putting yourself in trouble and then you're seeking advice. Second reason for disputes is oppression from both sides. An oppression can be caused by not knowing your obligations and your rights. So as stated earlier, when I always demand my rights, you have to cook, you have to clean, you have to obey me, you have to give me my rights, you have to do whatever is necessary upon a wife to do, but I don't provide her with a decent home, or I force her to serve my family, or I don't give her enough money, or I don't give her quality time, then there is an imbalance. So this is oppression. This is dhulm. Part of the dhulm from the husband's side is when he, got, when he has more than one wife. And this is a serious offense to have more than one wife and not to be fair. Allah Azza wa Jal said that if you are unable to be fair, then only restrain yourself and restrict yourself only to one wife. It is totally prohibited. People who do not have a job get married again. And they expect their first wife, who is a working woman, providing for her family, to spend also on the second wife. This is not logical. This is dhulm. It is part of the dhulm that you make your wife work and you take her wealth. In Saudi, this is prevalent, unfortunately. Men who have one wife and she's a working woman, he demands that she pays the salary of the maid and of the driver and to contribute to the groceries. What kind of a man is this who allows a woman to pay and provide for him? The role of a man is to provide for their wives. Allah says in the Quran, Ar-Rijalu qawwamuna ala nisa bima faddala Allahu ba'dahum ala ba'd wa bima anfaqu min amwalihim. Men are guardian over women because Allah favored men over women and because men provide and spend over their women and not the opposite way. So what is the solution for this problem? To acknowledge that Allah Azza wa Jal is all hearing and all seeing. So whenever you feel like transgressing, whenever you have the urge to oppress your spouse, then always remember that Allah is watching and no one is treated unfairly by his side. Thirdly, we have jealousy. And jealousy can be positive and can be negative. Do you have fool here? Do you have tamiz? It, it, you have this, huh? Good. In Saudi, just like half an hour before Maghrib, it is chaos. And so much packed people are fighting. You see a man or a male, let me yeah, rephrase that. You see a male in his fancy car parking in front of the shop, having his wife go and buy. Because women get better treatment and they won't have to stand in line for too long. But they will mix with men. And the man is sitting in his air-conditioned car 
waiting for the food to come through his wife. Is this jealousy? No. Jealousy can be positive and can be negative. When it is, according to Quran and Sunnah, this is positive. When you feel jealous, if your woman says, I'd like to go to uh, the mall on my own, said, no, I'll come with you. I'll shop with you. How is it possible that she goes to the mall or to the shop and asks the salesman for a discount? Come on, give me a discount for me. Okay, this is uh, the price, but what, what, what's the price for me? She speaks like this. What is the jealousy? No, I have to be with you. When she goes to a hospital and it's a male doctor, you have to be with her. Oh, no, no, you go with your mom, go with your sister, go with anyone. This is positive jealousy to be with her. Negative jealousy is the one that destroys marriages. When you keep on thinking, I have tons of people asking me every month, seriously, through email about such jealousy. Sheikh, I married my wife. She's a righteous, practicing, devout woman. She's a good woman. But I keep on having these whispers that she had a past. And I speak to her. Did you have boyfriends, girlfriends? Did you have affair? Did you have this? And she doesn't tell. So I don't know. Should I divorce her? What kind of a man is this? I got a counseling session a couple of weeks ago from a man and his wife together. They're having the same problem. She's suspecting him. And she says, I went through his phone, email, Facebook account. I even made a, a false Facebook for myself and tried to seduce him. A'udhu Billah. Is this part of the jealousy that Allah loves? This destroys marriages. Not only that, it can be jealousy without any foundation. A man is jealous of his own children because his wife takes care of them. A woman is jealous of her mother-in-law because her, her husband always loves her cooking and speaks highly of her and cuddles her and kisses her. She's je what is this? So this causes a lot of marriages to be in harm's way. How to solve such disputes? First of all, by respecting the other. Learn to respect the feelings of others, their privacy. They have their own privacy, so you respect that. Never ever look into your spouse's private affairs. Throughout my marriage, I've never opened my wife's uh, mobile phone, ever. She never did the same to me. I don't know her email password. I get people coming to me insisting, brothers calling me saying, Sheikh, I'm ordering my wife to give me her username and password of the Facebook to look into it. This is my right. I said, no, it's not your right. It's not your right to look into her uh, 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 emails or messages. What is this? She's not your slave. She has her own personality, her own friends, her own connections. You doubt her, divorce her. But such a life is not a real long-term marriage. You have to be frank. So you have doubts, address these doubts. But not something in the past. What is in the past remains in the past. If I had premarital relationships, and then I repented and sought Allah's forgiveness. And now I'm a practicing Muslim. No one on earth has the right to question me. I am sinful if I go and tell anyone on earth that I did this and that in the past. What's in the past remains in the past. As long as Allah has concealed it, do not expose yourself or Allah will hold you accountable even after repentance. Even after repentance, you will pay 
because you exposed your sins. We have to also look at the reasons of jealousy. If you are not abiding by the Sharia laws and you allow your wife to mix and intermingle with the opposite gender of the non-mahram. So the in-laws, they can sit freely as many communities do. The in-laws, the brother-in-law, the sister-in-law, they all sit for iftar, they mix, they, maybe some of them wear the hijab, but this is called free mixing. And she sits with her brother-in-law, the man married to her sister, she treats him like a brother. You treat the sister of your wife like a sister and you start to chit chat, to laugh, to do this. She thinks shaitan comes. I said this joke last week. He didn't even smile. And now my sister-in-law is saying the same joke and he's on the floor laughing with tears in his eyes. What is this? So it's not the joke. It's the one who said it. Shaitan comes, ah, look. Uh, he has feelings, he has this and that. The man, as a man, also has feelings. What is this? She's, she's always complimenting my brother-in-law uh, um, dress, um, the way he talks, the way he speaks, his job, his traveling, his gifts. He's, this is the jealousy that destroys the foundation of marriage. Among the things that would destroy marriages or cause problems in it, not being kind. See, kindness is an essential element in life. Inna Allah rafiqun. Allah is kind. Yuhibbur rifq loves kindness in everything. So when you don't have this kindness in marriage, you have a problem. What, what is a proper way of display of lack of kindness in marriage? Stubbornness. When both spouses are so stubborn, each one holds on to his own opinion, we cannot have a conversation. I'm right and you're wrong. End of, pro uh, end of story. When there is rivalry, if my wife thinks that she is equivalent to me, yeah, well, well, so we're all equal. No, you're, we're not equal. Imagine flying a plane with a, a pilot and a co-pilot. And the co-pilot insists that we descend to 10,000 feet. And the captain says, no, we have to remain on 20,000 feet. And they dispute, what happens? It will fall down, it will break. Because there's only one captain that is allowed to fly, to steer the ship, to rule and command in the marriage. So there is no rivalry here. A lot of argument provoked for no reason. So a simple command or a simple request from the wife turns into an interrogation. And why? Why did you do this? I remember you had done this and, and it becomes argumentative and, and, and life cannot go on like this. Whenever there is incompatibility, he's not educated and she is a PhD holder. He is from a poor family and she is from a rich family. There always be, there always be this look of degrading or looking down at people and this destroys marriages. So how to move on from this problem of not being kind? You have to be kind. You have to be tolerant. You have to move on. Not every single thing I must have an answer to. This is in Arabic called a taghafl. In English, the best translation is looking the other way. When your wife says something that may hurt you, pretend as you did not hear it and move on. This is mentioned in the Quran. When Allah Azza wa Jal revealed to Muhammad alayhi salatu our Prophet, 
about the secret. He entrusted one of his wives and she revealed it. So when he came to her, he did not expose all what Allah has revealed. Part of it and concealed some. When people, the siblings of Yusuf, went to him and they said, if Binyamin steals, a brother of his stole before, referring to Yusuf. Allah says, فَأَسَرَّهَا Yusuf." He concealed it and he did not show them that he knows that they're lying. Salah al-Din al-Ayyubi, one of the great leaders and rulers of all times, liberated Jerusalem. What did he do? He was with his army division leaders discussing battle. When two slaves were fighting, one of them got angry, took his shoe and threw it at the other one. Only to miss the other slave and it fell right next to Salah al-Din al-Ayyubi, the great warrior. What did he do? He looked to the left and continued to speak. That's it. No harm done. If we can manage to do this with our spouse, not every single statement that comes out, we make an interrogation, we make a fuzz about it, then we will have a lot of uh, uh, compatibility inshallah among the reasons and I have to I think wrap things up huh? how much time ya Atif 15 no no this is not entirely enough at all among the things that cause problems in marriages boredom being bored after yani, we have a joke Actually, I have a joke and I have a very bad sense of humor. But uh, may Allah Azza wa Jal make it easy for my wife. I always tell her that when I marry, the first year, she's the love of my life. The first five years, she's my cousin. I treat her as, as a cousin. The following 10 years in marriage or 15 years, we are man and wife. After 20 years, we are brothers and sisters. After 30 years, we become, or she becomes to me, like a part of my body. Does not invalidate wudu and does not obligate ghusl. So, sometimes if the marriage is too long, you get a little bo bit bored. You need to change. What do you mean, Sheikh? Take a second wife? No, no, no. That's a wrong change. You will devastate your life by doing this, if not needed. Change meaning that you have to understand that the daily routine makes people bored. It's the same thing she does every day. Cook, wash the dishes, wash the clothes, iron, clean the house. Then the cycle again tomorrow and the next week and the next year. It, it, this is very bad. So what to do? Insert change into your life in the easiest thing. Yani for example, and I always tell the people this. When was the last time you said to your wife, out of the blue, I love you? Rarely. When was it the last time you text her, I miss you? Never. Why should I do this? It's, uh, it, it costs like uh, 15 fills for uh, SMS. This is too expensive. No, no, she's, she's not worth it. No, you're wrong. Change your life. Send her once every month a bottle of perfume. Every week buy her a red rose. Do something, invite her for one to one, no children. We're going, you and I, quality time to have dinner at a restaurant. It doesn't cost you anything, but it breaks the daily routine. And sometimes we have to not pretend that we are idle. We have an, uh, a persona. We look in a certain way. We would like to give the people impression that we are like we look. With your spouse, it shouldn't be like this. You shouldn't be serious. Umar himself radiallahu anhu says, I like for a man when he enters his home to be like a, a, a little child playing around, joking, having fun. Why be sheikh in your home? Imagine, 
my wife comes to me and says, Asim, do this. I said, say Sheikh, please. He says, say Jazakillahu Khairan. Pray to Raka'a, Nafil, first of all, before you speak to me. What is this? No, between the spouses, it's a different thing. You have to be like a child. She has to be like a girl with you so that the routine is broken. We tend to lose so many things down the line in our marriage because we take things for granted, and this is wrong. Number six, outside interference. In short, just to catch up with the rest of the material, do not get your family's interference. The, the worst thing a man could do is to go to his mom and say, mom, she didn't cook. She didn't do this for me. She did, what? How would your mother feel? She would be devastated. This is my investment, my son. What is she doing? Now you go back home, you make up, you kiss her, she kisses you, you go to visit your mom. The following day, your mom will not forget that incident for five years and she will hate your wife for it. You explain, oh mom, I love her. I, I cannot even live without her. Doesn't do, doesn't work. You made the cardinal mistake. The same thing if she goes to her mom. And this is why usually men hate their mother-in-law because of this. The, the girl goes and speaks to her mom. He did this, he did that, he made me cry. The following day, she's so happy with him the mother is not happy with what she sees because she thinks of him as an enemy. Don't let anything that happens under your roof come out, no matter what, unless خلاص, you want to divorce. This is the last resort you have. If needed, go to someone you both trust. So again, I'm advertising my, my marital uh, counseling. Huh? Seriously, go to the Imam of the Masjid. Go to a person, an elderly you trust, like an uncle, who's a mahram to her, and you trust him, and say, uncle, listen to us. Wallahi, he will explain so many things and make life beautiful just by opening your eyes to some of it. Uh, seven, selfishness. And this destroys marriages. Men by nature are selfish. So we always want to come first. Our needs, our desires, our social activities. And this is not a healthy marriage. Women tend to be selfish sometimes, but not as much as the men, because the men are controlling usually. And we need to respect each other's rights and needs, and we have to participate in good and in bad. Now, in a nutshell, I have only 15 points to reduce or to prevent marital disputes. If we manage to apply them in our marriages, inshallah, there won't be any dispute with our wives. But these are theoretical. When you come to the ground and try to implement them, it's almost difficult. One, first of all, any dispute, you have to adhere to the fact that it takes place because of your sins. Any calamity that falls upon you, it is because of your sins. And a, a, a dispute with the one you love is definitely a calamity. Muhammad ibn Sirin, one of the great tabi'een says, I commit a sin, and I see it clearly in the behavior of my right and in the behavior of my wife. We are so overwhelmed with sins, we don't know which one caused the drift. We have so many sins and we have problems at office with the neighbor, with the children, with the wife, with the parents, with the in-laws, with the relatives and kinship. Because we have so many sins, we are, Muhammad ibn Sirin, was a righteous man. He had one sin, he can immediately relate it to what he sees. Two, you have to live on earth. You have to be realistic. Don't live in your fantasy land. Marriage is not living on fantasy land. 
So you have to be realistic. You have to stop wanting to change the world. Your spouse will never change. Accept him as he is and hope for the best. Make dua, try to improve. But to try and fix things against its nature, this won't usually happen. Live with all the shortcomings that are possible and look for the best. Three, learn how to apologize even if you're not wrong. Oof, why would I do this? Most of the disputes that come to me, the, the one party, one spouse says, no, I'm not going to apologize. If he doesn't come and apologize, I'm not going to forgive him. And he says, if she doesn't come and apologize, I will not forgive them. And the only one who's laughing is Shaitan. He's happy. He's like, okay, guys, don't forgive one another and the hell with you. This is what he's doing. So learn how to forgive because it is not winning the battle that counts. It is winning the war. And marriage is not a war. But don't be short-sighted. So the hadith is crystal clear. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, should I tell you about your women in paradise? What are the characteristics of women of paradise? The Prophet says, she is kind and loving. She is bearing a lot of children. She is a woman. If oppressed, who's the oppressor? The, the husband. She's a woman. If oppressed, she will go to her husband, take his hand and says, my hand in your hand. By Allah, I will not sleep until you are satisfied. She's the one who's oppressed. Who's the one who's supposed to apologize? The man. But the Prophet tells us this is the characteristic of a woman of Jannah. Now, most women would say, no way, I'm not going to apologize for him. Yeah, this is difficult. But this Jannah, attaining Jannah is not easy. It is something that needs a lot of work. One of the be best reasons to stop disputes in marriages and, and, and reduce them is to suppress your anger. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, those who spend freely, whether in prosperity or in adversity, adversity, who restrain anger and pardon all men, for Allah loves those who do good. A man came to the Prophet and said, advise me. He said, لا تغضب, don't become angry. I get tons of phone calls. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. My husband yesterday after an argument says, I divorced you. So does this count? I said, yes, it counts. She says, but he was angry. I said, no one is happy with his wife and drinking cappuccino. He said, wallahi, I love you, but I divorce you. Every divorce happens when you're angry. So what do you expect? 99% of divorce cases come to me. Sheikh, I was angry. I, I didn't know what I was going to say. I, I was this, she provoked me, she insulted me. If you manage to suppress your anger for five minutes, what would have happened? I have a brother, mashallah, is practicing, but he's wise. He's, mashallah, more wise than practicing. Not knowledgeable. He says that I have a wife that breaks my glasses, takes my mobile and hides it, conceals my keys. I can't leave the home. If I try to open the door and leave, she takes off her clothes and goes in the street. And she says, look at me, look at me. She's lunatic. He says, and I said, mashallah, wh wh how long you've been married? He says, 25 years. Uh -huh. You haven't divorced her yet? I would have probably killed her. A'udhu billah. What kind of a wife is this? No, 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 Sheikh, you don't know. Allah Azza wa Jal gave me the power to suppress my anger. So I just don't say anything. I let her speak, insult, curse my father, curse my mother, curse me, curse everyone. But after one hour, Wallahi ya Sheikh, she comes to me, kisses my feet 
and cries at my feet saying that I am sorry, I apologize, I don't know what I have done, I'm an animal, I am this, I am that. And I'm sitting, enjoying it for another two weeks, like a king. But then I get this cycle again. Akhi, suppress your anger. You win. My sister or daughter, suppress your anger. You have him like a ring round your finger. But once you confront rivalry, no, you said this, you said that, then you have a problem. Try to live. And when you have a problem, address that particular problem. I have a sister, I have her name here, but I'm not going to disclose it. She calls me every now and then, and her husband calls me. And the husband complains that, Sheikh, it's been five years. I am like clockwork. Everything I have to do and obliged to do, I do it extra. But every time she comes up with something I, she doesn't like, she opens old files. 25 years ago, you married me, you did this, your mother said this and you did, Wallahi ya Sheikh, my mother is dead. And she brings the problems now. What kind of a life is this? What kind of a marriage? No, you have a problem with your husband? You have a problem with your wife? Identify and address that particular problem and get it solved. Don't connect it and open different fronts. You will definitely lose the battle and the war. Have one front, focus on it, solve the problem, problem closed. Khalas. Do not participate other parties. We've gone through that. The best marriage is when you have one, preferably both spouses, being kind, easygoing, tolerant, patient. This is the best marriage. I make a mistake, she says, no problem, yalla. Next time don't do it, huh? I'm gonna watch you. But she doesn't. She makes a, a, a mistake. I'll, 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 t I'll share with you a secret, but it's not a secret, everybody knows this. I've been married for 35 years, alhamdulillah. Almost 36, who's counting? My wife is so old, she was born in the previous century. But alhamdulillah, and she's a grandmother, so don't even have any weird ideas. So many times she cooks bad food. After this long period of marriage, I eat three, four morsels, and I say, Zakmullah khair, excellent food. And I leave. And she says, you're lying. The food is horrible. The food is burnt. The food is too salty. I can't eat it. Why don't you come open and say that this is bad? I said, it's very simple. I don't buy you jewelry. I don't send you flowers. I don't take you to Côte d'Azur or to uh, Dubai or to different places on vacation. I'm not giving you a lavish life like so many of your cousins and relatives and friends. So at least I have to appreciate what you're doing for me. So it's give and take. If you are easy going, you will have the happiest marriage possible. Don't put your rights in front of your face whenever you have communication. Neglecting your obligations and only looking at your rights is devastating for a marriage. And what is more devastating for a marriage is to make something to be one of your rights when it's not. It's not a right, you magnify things. So for example, like you guys, most of you, joint family is a norm. You have to get married and get your wife in your house to serve your parents. And you think that this is God-given right and that she must serve your mother and your father and your siblings and the, your in-laws and cook and clean. No, it's not your, her right. It's not your right. If she does it out of her own goodwill, you should cherish her and treat her like a jewel because Allah tells you to give her a separate home. So when you magnify things and make them rights of yours when they're not, you will have problems. Try to solve problems and not run away from them. Running away from problems do, does not solve them. It will remain. So you, you have to have quality time. Sit down, talk, 
find a compromise, what she is happy with, what you're happy with, and try to find a way out. Never be aggressive. There are types, especially men. When they speak, they start pointing fingers. They start accusing others. You did this, you did that. You know, in, in, in Britain, in UK, doing this is an insult. In, 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 in uh, Hussain Yee, you know Sheikh Hussain Yee. Once he said in China, they have a beautiful saying. They say, when you point at a person, you're pointing one finger at him, but you're pointing three fingers at yourself. So always keep this in mind. So don't be aggressive, don't be insultive. Always ask, maybe they have a reason for what they had done so you can give them an excuse instead of attacking and then end up apologizing. Sorry, I didn't know, I didn't know. Too many apologies would ruin it. Select the right time to speak. Sisters fail in doing this. I come from work, eight hours, 10 hours, horrible day. My boss did not give me my increment, nor my bonus, nor my raise. The appraisal was bad. My colleagues are digging holes so that I feel uh, I fall into them and they get my position. They are uh, uh, gossiping, chit-chatting against me. I'm driving here back home. This guy cuts in front of me. He hits my car. A, a bro another person gives me his fingers or hands or whatever in, in a bad gesture. Someone curses me, insults me. I come to the house, my parking under the shade has been taken by someone I don't know who. And my neighbor is putting garbage in front of my house. So I'm devastated, frustrated, tired, and hungry. I come home and my wife, who's been 10 hours between four walls, wants to speak, wants to chit chat. I'm not in the mood. No, you have to sit and talk to me. Your mother called. She said this and that. Why did, what did she do this? Your sister did not invite me to her uh, uh, aqiqa. You, this, you. billahi min ash Select the right time. A reasonable, wise woman would just say, how was your day? Okay, put the food, massage his feet, maybe put it in salty hot water, give him a massage before his nap. When he wakes up in the afternoon, give him hell. <laughs> now is the right time. But you have to be selective. Likewise, a man has to know when to address his wife. If she's angry and she's frustrated and furious and her, red are, 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 her eyes are red, and you can see that the thorns of Iblis coming from her, uh, uh, horns of Iblis coming from her head. And you say, the Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, women are so bad because of their religion and because of their uh, 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 sanity and such. She will curse the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam. You don't know who's causing it. So you have to be selective in, in what you say and what you do and when to ch choose the right time. You have to also be knowledgeable and careful because women have different moods men usually have one mood they they don't change halas they don't want to talk they don't want to argue they, women they are like a cycle this is what makes them beautiful one day she is wow it burns your fingers and one day inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi this is a problematic. You have to live with that and appreciate that they have different uh, uh, modes for them and that would put them in a different mood. You have to be satisfied with what Allah has given you. If you manage to look, but we don't have any glasses now because we're fasting, a, a, a glass that is half full, half empty. Why always say it's half empty? You're pessimistic. If you say it's half full, you're optimistic. Life is like this, it's always half full. So look at the good thing of your wife or of your husband so that you would be appreciative. The Prophet says, وسلم, no believing man, no believing man should hate a believing woman. If he hates one of her characteristics, he will be pleased with another. And finally, I hope on time, 
Yeah, خلاص, huh? uh, you have to be wise. You have to look at the consequences of your decisions. Not being victorious is important. Winning the battle is not winning the war. Sometimes you have to lose a battle. Show that you give up, surrender, just to make things uh, move. And I pray to Allah Azza wa Jal that He makes our marriages one of the happiest, if not the happiest possible. I pray to Allah that He grants us the wisdom and the knowledge to know how to tackle and to please our spouses. هذا والله أعلم ونسبة العلم إليه أسلم وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد